Good morning, Yorkshire Classic Cars Limited fans, and welcome to, gosh, the second of probably the sunniest days I've ever seen in Retford. Yesterday was nearly 30 degrees, so yeah, it's pretty warm. Uh, you can probably see it's super sunny outside. Um, in fact, I'm even going to show you, because it really is a beautiful day. Now, look how sunny it is. Beautiful day. Really, really sunny, sunny and shiny. Um, I'm going to do, I, obviously I haven't done a lot on the Capri recently. So what I'm going to do is, um, but yeah, basically the, the engine is now back in the car. Um, I'll show you the engine there. It's sat back in the, uh, in the engine bay. The clutch is attached. And as you can see, hopefully in that picture, I've sort of stripped all the wiring down, uh, wiring harness down, uh, in the pursuit of starting to wire the blooming thing up. Um, now the wiring I've already undertaken. There is a video already on my YouTube channel of the wiring loom there. Now, to finish that, I really, really need to um, install the ECU. Now, the ECU, um, I've got friends who build them and people who do stuff for this and people who've used them before. So what I've bought is a Mega Square ECU. Um, this is an MS2 with an MS3 uh, board in it, I believe, because it's got data logging. You can probably see the data logging part on the end. Um, and I bought this as a kit um, online for a company that does a, a Rover specific kit. They do other car specific kits as well. Um, company called, uh, Extra FI who aren't sponsoring the video. I hasten to add, I'm not recommending their stuff. I haven't even used it yet. So it, it's just, I'm just saying that they seem to have a very complete package and being new to standalone ECUs. Um, I have used ECUs in the past. Um, I've had, uh, apexes on skylines. I've had, you know, um, mines ECUs, I had a, an Impul ECU that was very good. Um, but they are sort of plug and play ECUs. They just plug into your stock harness. Um, and a lot of the things like the Link, uh, G4s and things like that, the great ECUs that do tons of stuff. Um, however, they plug into the original harness. Now, that's fine. I had the original harness for this engine. However, some of the plugs on it went to relays and fuel pumps and things that just aren't there anymore. So rather than try and adapt that harness, I'm going to build a specific harness. So the kit I bought um, came with loom plugs and stuff, and I'll go through that in a sec. But yeah, so I thought I'd build a specific harness. Um, so what I'm going to do, the purpose of this video, excuse the waffle, uh, is to talk you through and show you, uh, well, not this video, this is the intro video, but the subsequent videos will be me as I pick out and wire up the engine and get it running. Um, right. So... Um, a lot of the ECU. The ECU comes with uh, the ECU, obviously, with the guy's label on it, which is a, on a bit of an angle, so I'm going to have to peel that off. Uh, it's got two part plugs on the end. These are where the wiring loom goes to. Let me just grab the wiring loom. Okay, and the version I bought has these two plugs on. One is for the um, main wiring, as you can see. There's a lot of that. Um, not a huge amount, I will acknowledge, but there is a lot. And then the other plug, sorry about this, should have been more prepared. The other plug has the uh, spark controls in it. Now, this is, I've gone for a Mega Squirt 2 because it's batch ignition and batch fuel. Um, you can go sequential fuel, but you need a cam sensor. Um, I have a cam sensor on the engine, but I still was never really sure if it was appropriate for what we were doing. And what I did was I thought I'll just dispatch that because basically to do um, sequential fuel, you need to be able to measure exhaust ca gas temperatures in each um, in each manifold output. Um, and I haven't got that facility and I don't want to get that involved either, quite honestly. So I don't, you know, I didn't want to really need to do that. It's great because you can um, map in individual fuel in on individual cylinders at individual times. So anything like this where, you know, flow could be an issue on a particular cylinder, especially with a turbo, um, you can see that. You can also see if you've got a leak or an issue or something that's going to damage your engine. However, I didn't want to get involved with it. We're not going all out. I am not, I'm not like Cletus McFarlane. I'm not building the world's fastest car in the world, money, no object sort of job. This is just a, a, a relatively budget build. So these looms come now. I bought these specifically. I didn't buy the specific loom. You can buy a loom for extra money that just plugs and plays. This one is labeled. Um, now I've looked through this and to me, it doesn't make an awful lot of sense, which is why I went on YouTube to have a look, see if anybody had actually done it. 
Um, there is Spark A, Spark B, Spark C, Spark D, and a lot of other wiring on there. I'm not going to go through every little modicum of it. Um, in the kit, you also get a pair of coil packs. Um, these are Volkswagen coil packs with a built-in driver. Okay, so they've got the built-in amplifier there. Um, I have a second one somewhere. Obviously, I have eight cylinders. Um, now, that just has four plug wires on the end, and it comes with a plug, but it doesn't tell you which wire goes into which plug, and I have no idea. So that's something I'm going to have to find out. Um, there is a, a, a host of, of information on the website, which is all free to download, so you can get all that from there. It comes with a crank position sensor. Um, it also came with a trigger wheel um, and a trigger wheel bracket, uh, a crank position sensor bracket, which I had to fit to the engine. Now, Rover V8s already have a trigger wheel on the flex plate or flywheel on the on the Serpentine, on the GEMS engines. However, because I, need, I had a, an automatic flex plate and I, wanted, I didn't want to use a Range Rover flywheel because they tend to be a lot heavier. And obviously, if I'm building a car that I want to go fast in, uh, weight is an issue on the flywheel. So I've used a Lightning TVR flywheel I bought for a friend, um, and that has no trigger wheel facility on it. So I've used the trigger wheel that came with the kit, uh, which meant a little bit of machining on the front pulley. Um, now then, if I take you down there, you can see that I have had to machine the back of the crank pulley there. Um, you probably can't see the machining. Um, and that's where the pickup is located. Now, to mount the pickup and the crank wheel, this is a 36 tooth minus one so somewhere on there there's a oh there you can see the gap there look can you see the gap that's where that's your reference point for top dead center so tdc which would be your zero timing mark on your on your front pulley um now i have to reference that to a select degrees can't remember what it is to this now this is off purely because um it's magnetic and because i work in a workshop where i use a lot of metal and grinding i didn't particularly want everything stuck to it you have to set it within a few, uh, I think it's one millimetre of there, but again, I'll have to check that. So one millimetre of there. And you also need to know where TDC is. Now, these serpentine engines don't have a TDC pointer or TDC marks. Um, so what I'm going to do is at home, I'm going to lay the little top dead centre finder to put in there, make my own timing mark and timing pointer. The timing pointer will probably just be a groove in there uh, and a groove in the flywheel. So it's relative basically to the, um, to the, uh, um, pickup and I can use my timing light on that. Um, the bolts come with it, spacers come with it in case you want to space this far and aft. Done all that on my lathe because I wanted to get all that fitted and mocked up. Loom wise, uh, some of the sensors you need, some you don't. Now I've broken all this loom down and it's given me a much better insight into what I needed. So things like the air conditioning, the power steering, all that sort of stuff, that's all long gone. Now, if you're buying this ECU to fit to a Range Rover, then all you have to do is cut the plug off and wire up the wires. There's a diagram that just shows you where to do it to a, a GEMS engine. Now, obviously, I'm not doing that. Uh, and as I say, parts of that loom went to uh, body things that I haven't got anymore. So you'll see there's no injectors in. The injectors are out because I need larger capacity injectors than what comes with it. These are the injector plugs. Now, what it turns out is these are fed, um, I think it's 12 volt feed, which comes out the ECU. And each injector has a, an earth facility on it. So when that earths, that fires the injector. Um, you need the ECU coolant sensor. This is the temperature gauge sensor. I've removed that just basically so I know which one is which. I'm not using that. I'm using this, which is a capillary autometer one. Um, there's other stuff in here. I've kept the um, injectors all together, but I don't actually need to. Um, this is just the existing loom. There are earths that go to body. There are earths that are switched earths. There are lives that go to things of five volt lives to things like your throttle position sensor to things like your um idle speed control valve and they are all separate um you'll also notice i've had to modify my fuel rail to clear my rocker covers so i've done that and i've started fitting the loom through to things like the alternator i have only threaded them through that's not a particularly big job this kit also comes with 
uh, an intake air temperature sensor. So I need to install that. That will be going in a silicon hose in the mouth of the throttle body. I already have an idle speed control valve here built in and a throttle position sensor built in. These are compatible with the, the Megasquirt ECU. It is built for that. Um, however, I need to make a spacer for this to lift it up a little bit so it'll, so it'll, uh, so it'll clear the rock covers, but that's obviously that's just aesthetic, really. Um, the problem I do have with the intake air temperature sensor is I have no idea what thread it is. I think it's M16, but I could be totally wrong. I'm going to check that this morning. <coughs> um, and yeah, that's pretty much it, really. Um, there's live 12 volt feeds to it. There's um, switch 12 volt feeds to it, obviously. There are fuel pump takeoffs that I'm not using, so I'm just using a fuel pump on a switch, but I may change that so I have a switch and a fuel pump from the ECU in case I ever have to pull the safety cut off. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the basic breakdown of what comes with the kit and what I already know. Um, <clears throat> I can't remember if there's a base map on there, but there is one on his site. There's also firmware on his sites, and you get the lead to download all that, I believe. Not where I put it, but it's around somewhere. It's in one of these boxes. Um, you also need a nice, clean uh, boost reference or vacuum line from there. Uh, but that's no big deal at all. So that's where I'm at at the kit at the moment. I've pulled all the kit, the existing loom down. Um, I have a few little teeny tiny jobs to do on the car before I can start mounting the ECU. The ECU is going to be mounted. Oops. You need to be able to get to it. So when the guy who maps it, because I won't be mapping it myself, when the guy maps it, so I'm going to put it up there just at the top there. If you look at the console top where the wiring is just looped down, it's going to just sit up there. So not only can you get to plug in to map, because you obviously have to do that through that um, connector there, uh, but also I can get to use a, a data card there, a media card, so I can I can data log, basically. I, I'm not going to be... You'll see people like Steve Morris and Cleese McFarland, if you haven't seen their pages, you know, Garrett and people like that. I don't know them, um, but I do see them when they do a run and they look at all the data logging and then they adjust something and check it all again, and, and that's fab, but I don't know enough about it to do that. Uh, and I don't have the money, really, to buy the gear to do it, so... If something goes wrong, then I can have a look at that. That that would be a great thing to have a look at. But other than that, that's just, you know, I just thought it was worth having it sort of future-proof CCU a little bit. Um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty much that. There was something else I was going to mention. I can't remember what it was. Oh, yes, the injectors. Um, you'll see the injectors are out. Um, these are the stock injectors uh, and stock inject plugs, single-hole injectors. These are not large enough for my turbo installation. Um, I don't know what power it's going to kick out. And as a rule of thumb, or what I, I was always told or taught, I can't remember where I found it was, your injector needs to be running at a maximum of 80% duty cycle. So 80% of its capacity, uh, really. So if you're making, say, 600 horsepower, you need to work out um, that you're you, Injector is flowing at least that much cc's per minute at 80%, if that makes sense. So what I've done is, just to try and again future-proof myself, is I've been looking at fitting these. These are Volkswagen 1.8T, are um, the same as uh, Focus ST 5-cylinder or Volvo um, injectors. This is a second-hand one I bought off eBay, just to try in the fuel rail, and it does fit. However... I've got to be careful because I've just painted the shelf here. Uh, however, they are shorter. So if you look at the the length of the injector, it's about half an inch shorter. So what I've ordered is some fittings that extend the top there, like a little top hat fitting. Um, and they're Chineseium, so they're coming via God only knows who. And they should have been here yesterday, but they weren't. So... Until I know they're going to fit, I'm not going to buy a full set of injectors because they aren't cheap. Um, those are significantly cheaper than buying bespoke injectors that will plug and play. They are a high impedance injector like mine are, uh, and I will need AV1 conversion plugs, but that's no big deal. Once they're, once I'm sure they fit, they'll go in and I'll start and route the wiring. The wiring is obviously going on my installation is going to route back. 
because the plugs go up, up under the bulkhead there out of the moisture and stuff. Um, but I want it to look nice and neat and tidy. I could run them around the front and extend them back, but I like everything to look really neat when it's in there. I find it easy to work on. I find it significantly easier to clean. Um, and I find it just, just looks a bit more professional. And for the little extra effort, you get a massive reward in my opinion. So yeah, so that's where we stand at the moment. Uh, stay tuned because as I get a little bit further on with it, I'll, uh, I'll start and show you. I need to print off all the wiring diagrams that I think are relevant to the job. Get me head around it. I've had a lot on recently and I haven't had time to do that. So that's, um, it's an evening job one night. I did have one, but I used it as a parcel labeler for eBay. So <laughs> it's vanished. Um, however, uh, I will be on with that. So yeah, stay tuned. Please subscribe if you haven't. Um, if you're interested in how this goes along with the Mega Squirt, please subscribe. Um, it won't be right for everyone, but it might give you an insight into how to break the wiring down and just explain it a little better because there's loads of installation videos on YouTube, but none of them seem to really go into how to do it more clearly for a complete novice, which is how I consider myself at the moment. I have some knowledge, and as we know, some knowledge is a dangerous thing. Anyway, stay tuned. Please subscribe. Thanks a lot.